In the search for full beer, many a beer drinker has tried the usual brands and found some too light. They've turned to imported brands and found some too heavy. But in the serious beer drinker's search, there is a ray of hope, Carling Black Label. Since 1840, a Canadian heritage of richer, fuller, bigger beer taste. More beer taste for your money. More beer taste for your thirst. Carling Black Label. Canadian heritage. Great beer taste. Spy! Go for All in the Family weekday afternoons at 5.30 on WCIV Channel 4 in Detroit. News for Detroit with John Blunt and Jennifer Moore, Don Shane with sports, and Larry Shannon with the weather. Good evening. Detroit police don't know why it happened. This morning's shooting at a Westside motorcycle club that left three people dead and six others wounded. But police are holding three people in custody, though no one has been formally charged. Dan Mountney reports on the trouble between rival motorcycle clubs. Members of the USS Enterprise Motorcycle Club moved into their new headquarters recently, a former taxicab garage on Livernois. The group, which considers itself a social organization, threw a party last night to celebrate their new location. Then about 1.30, the party got way out of hand. Another motorcycle club calling themselves Satan's Sidekicks apparently tried to get into the party. Reportedly, they refused to pay the $2.50 cover charge, and that's when all the shooting began. It sounded like Vietnam. It sounded like, I, haven't, I didn't, wasn't in now. But it sounded like what I would imagine now to be. It just sounded like a multi-war. I've never heard so many gunshots in my life. When you see guns and you see people that crazed, it's not going to, you know, it doesn't stop anything. Somebody's going to get hurt. And everybody was just trying to get out the way. Nine people did not get out of the way. Three men, all members of the Enterprise Group, were killed in the shooting. Five other men and one woman were wounded by the gunfire. Police could offer no motives for the shootings, and this morning members of the Enterprise Club were also at a loss as to why it all happened. We're the type of club, we don't get involved in no trouble, we don't start nothing, but we're not going to let nobody walk over us. So what's that mean? That means we'll stand up and protect our own. Could there be more trouble? Could be. Unlike his own club, Williams claims Satan's sidekicks has a reputation for violence. Detroit police are questioning three suspects in the shootings. So far, no charges have been filed. Dan Mountney, News 4 Detroit. A Farmington Hills man was killed today when an explosion tore his home apart. Police have not yet released the identity of the victim pending notification of next of kin. Witnesses say the man had arrived home only moments before the blast was heard around 2 this afternoon. They believe it was an accidental fire, but the cause is still under investigation. John? Give us the Shaw and we will give you the hostages. That's the word from Iranian students tonight who continue to hold 59 staff members hostage in the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. The hostages are described as safe and well. Steve Mallory has a report. United States Marine Corps guards used tear gas to try to disperse the mob of Islamic students. But that wasn't enough. Hundreds of Iranians finally overran the embassy compound, seizing about 90 people, mostly Americans. The hostages, men and women, were blindfolded and herded into the embassy's basement. No casualties were reported. The Iranians burned a United States flag and denounced the U.S. government, saying they would stay until the U.S. sends the deposed Shah back to Iran. Earlier today, the Ayatollah Khomeini publicly criticized the U.S. for providing refuge for the Shah. His speech was viewed as a signal by the Muslim students to attack the embassy. The Islamic Republican Party, the country's largest political group, endorsed the student's action. And a spokesman for the Ayatollah said that the occupation of the embassy had Khomeini's personal support. Iranian radio reported that the hostages were safe and being fed. Steve Mallory, NBC News. Death, death, death to the Shah was a chant by nearly 100 demonstrators in New York City today. They demanded the Shah's return to Iran while protesting outside the hospital where he is being treated for cancer. At the same time, another group of Iranian students chained themselves to the Statue of Liberty in protest to the Shah's presence in New York City. Park Rangers arrested the seven. The Shah is expected to be treated in New York for at least the next 18 months. 
Chrysler car buyers may get the chance soon to take advantage of rebates. The Detroit News reports the corporation is considering a new rebate program. It was in August that Chrysler began a massive rebate program to reduce huge inventories. This time around, the move would be designed to raise cash and to help match the $1.5 billion federal loan guarantee proposal. Chrysler spokesmen say a rebate plan is under consideration, but that no date has been firmed up. Now that the Treasury Department has put forth its aid proposal for Chrysler, the company must wait for Congress to approve the plan. There are indications that one of the conditions to be attached to the loan guarantees is that the government oversee Chrysler's operations. United Auto Workers Union President Douglas Fraser says he sees no objections to such a condition. I don't know if uh, the legislation will, will take that final form, but I have no objection. Uh, to the government being an overseer. And, and uh, here again, I, I think it's a question of principle. After all, it is the taxpayer's money mm -hmm. that the Chrysler Corporation is going to be using. And I uh, think that the government should certainly, the people through their government should have an effective voice of how that money is spent. And Fraser says while the loan guarantees are a gamble, he believes it is one the government has to take. John? Still ahead on News 4 Detroit, the NRC sends a message to the nuclear industry, new safety rules or no licenses. Detroit's Cardinal Dearden travels to Rome to meet with Pope John Paul. And for the Lions, it's the same old story on the roads, a loss, but some Michigan football teams are winning at the Silverdome. Don Shane with all the sports in just a moment.